The stone in front of the tomb must have been very large. This one, the channel is, is more than a foot wide. The stone must have weighed several tons here. We don't know, of course, exactly where Jesus' tomb was, but it was a very large stone. So when the unleavened bread feast was over, when Shabbat was over and the women came through the streets of the city that was awakening on Sunday morning, they wondered who would roll away the stone. Now, I had always understood that the sequence of events that morning were that an angel came down and rolled that stone away with great power. And Jesus came out of the tomb and returned to his father. And then the women and later the disciples came to look in to see that the tomb was empty. But if you read the text carefully, that's not the sequence. The sequence was Jesus came out of the tomb. Then the angel came down and rolled away the stone so the disciples and the women could come and look in and see that he was alive. And that's an important detail, for there is no stone, not the tombstone the size of this one or any of the other rolling stones that have been found around this country, not even the 650-ton stone Herod put in the Temple Mount could hold back the power of the Messiah, God's Son, when it was time for him to come back from the dead. And it was on the Feast of First Fruits, the day in which the Jewish people brought to God the very beginning of their spring harvest, the very first part of their fruit, to say, God, this is all I have, but I give it to you because I know you'll provide for me the rest. And Jesus was raised on first fruits and as Paul says he was the first fruit of those who were raised from the dead his resurrection is the proof the evidence the commitment he made that all of us his followers will be raised resurrected one day as well